All right, guys, so we're in luck. We actually found somebody at the house. They said the bus actually belongs to a nephew and that it may be for sale. It's uh, Saturday afternoon, about uh, 4.30, looks like. And right now we are about five hours and 10 minutes away from our destination. We're actually Wyoming bound, um, a town called Basin. Never been there before. We're gonna loop up through Jackson Hole and uh, not really sure where from there. I believe we're gonna go up over this pass that I can't remember the name of. Really pretty area though. Um, I did a little Sunday drive a couple years ago in my 67 bug and just kind of just took off and went for a drive. Needed some windshield time and I believe at least looking on the map when I was kind of Google mapping it it looks like that's probably I think it loops up over through Dubois or however you say that, Wyoming. Anyways, uh, we're heading to Basin. I was on Marketplace this morning, uh, Facebook Marketplace. I was laying in bed when I first got up and I was just kind of searching the classifieds to see if there was anything interesting. And There was actually a pair of Carmen Guias. Uh, one of them was a 1963 and the other one was a 1958. And uh, the pair were, were listed for like two grand. Um, so I sent it off to a couple friends of mine that I thought might be interested and nobody seemed too interested in it. So I decided to call the people up and see if I could work a deal out on maybe just the 58. You know, the 58 Gia is what's referred to as a low light Gia. And uh, they're actually pretty sought after. Um, they're kind of uncommon, you don't see them a lot. And so <clears throat> I called them up, they said they would uh, separate off the 58. And so I decided to go ahead and take a chance on it, buy it, it's a rough car. To be honest with you, this drive that I'm making um, is gonna be about 12 hours round trip to go get this car. And it's probably really not worth the trip. Like this thing's, it's rough. But I figured it was a good excuse to uh, a good excuse to go on a little road trip, drop some uh, cards along the way. I've got these cards I made up that I leave at like gas station cork boards and stuff, and then just drive some back roads and see how many VWs we can come up with. So right now we're gonna make a YouTube video. You guys, all of us here, we're gonna make a YouTube video. And we're gonna see how many Volkswagens we can find on this 12 hour road trip. It's about 360 miles, give or take, each way. So, you know, a little over 700 miles. And we're gonna see how many VWs we can find. I'll show you guys, you know, some of my tactics I guess I use when I'm, when I'm road tripping. And uh, we'll see how many vehicles we can come up with and we'll see if maybe we can get lucky and make a deal on something else besides this crusty old low light Gia. So anyways guys, let's hit the road. We're heading towards uh, Swan Valley, Idaho right now. And uh, I'll update you a little as we go. Okay, we're just getting into Swan Valley. Coming up on the uh, Swan Valley Commissary. At least that's what we used to call it. I think they call it uh, Turn left onto State Highway 31. It's like they're calling it River Creek or something now. This is a world famous square ice cream cone. If you guys have ever been here, this place is usually hopping in the summertime. Miles. Continue on State Highway 31. So hang on, I'm gonna flip around and see. I missed the sign there. There was a warning sign, something about Teton Pass, which that's the way GPS has taken us. But if it's closed to trailers, which it sometimes is, we'll need to take a different route. 
So let's go back here and see what the warning was for Teton Pass. Turn right onto Swan Valley Highway. If we take a left up here, we would, uh, there's actually a bay window just sitting off the road right up here. But we're looking for stuff we've never seen before. So even if we did go that route, that bay window wouldn't count. All right, Wyoming 22 Teton Pass, weight limit 60,000 GBW. Looks like it's open to trailers today. So we're gonna go ahead and go over the pass. So we'll just head up here and I'll give you guys an update here in a few minutes. All right, we got stuck behind a RV pulling a Jeep. Little motorhome coming up on the top of, I think this is the top of Pine Creek Pass. I can't remember what this is called. I believe this is the Grand Teton Scenic Byway though. Yeah, Pine Creek Pass, elevation 6,764 feet. So now we're going to drop down into Victor where we actually I've actually pulled two buses out of Victor over the years. Um, first bus I ever bought in Victor was a 61, it was a, a 15 window, 1961 15 window, and it was a walkthrough. All original paint. Uh, pretty cool bus, probably should have held on to that one. And then the other one was a few years ago when uh, I helped my brother in law pull that camper out of Victor. Um, that's on our YouTube channel. Anyways, we're gonna head into Victor, then we're gonna take a right and turn and go up over Jackson Pass, which is, it's a pretty good hill. All right, if you guys look off to the right up there, you will see the very top of the Grand Teton. It's a little bit hidden right now. Trees clear out. You should be able to see it up there. Anyways, that's the Grand Teton. We're gonna get a lot better look at it here as soon as we uh, head over the pass. I'll uh, get you some more shots over here in a moment. All right, here's the Welcome to Victor sign up here on the right and if you took a left at this next intersection and went down about a quarter of a mile over there that's actually where we pulled out the I believe it was a 60 camper it was an old panel that it had windows welded into it years ago or not welded but cut in years ago um, ended up uh, my little brother-in-law he had that bus for a year or so and then we ended up selling it to a guy in Phoenix, Arizona, and he actually was a broker, come to find out. And that bus ended up going to uh, Lucas at Old Bully Berlin in Berlin, Germany. I also forgot, until I was just thinking just now, um, this is also, Victor's also where we pulled the 69 convertible from Mali. Uh, that was actually last year. We pulled that out of Victor. And then a couple of years ago, I actually bought uh, two bay windows from this shady character up here. And uh, I, I don't think I think I I think I did roll video on all that stuff. But the deal by the time I was done with the deal, I was so sick and tired of it. I I didn't even do any videos on it. It was it was a bad deal. But I did pull those two bay windows out of Victor as well. I'm sure somewhere, maybe I'll do a throwback Thursday video or wet way back Wednesday or something. One of these days on the two bay windows and tell you how that all went down. So we're getting into town here. Um, there is actually another guy here in town that up until just recently, he had a, a little panel. Uh, split window panel. That uh, was a small hatch, 62, 63. He just sold that though. Um, he also, he still owns a van again. And he still owns a split camper. I think it's like a 
64, 65. And he's actually also, supposedly, I haven't seen it, but supposedly owns a, a Speedster, an original Porsche Speedster, which that would be kind of cool. Maybe you have to get a hold of him one of these days and swing over and see his, see his stuff. I'm going to put the camera down and do some scanning and uh, see if we can't find a Volkswagen sitting somewhere along the side of the road here. We got to start, uh, we got to start spotting a few here. That's what we're doing a video on is spotting VWs. So far I'm not doing so good. Well guys, Victor kind of skunked us. I wasn't really expecting to find much there to be honest with you. I kind of picked over Victor a few times and I think I know where pretty much everything is. But uh, we are going to hit some new territory, some roads and some towns I've never been to before on this trip. So I'm hoping that uh, we can come up with something cool. Um, we are in Wyoming now. We're heading up Grand Teton Pass. Uh, the other, on the other side of Grand Teton, we'll drop down into Wilson, Wyoming. Wilson is actually where we pulled the 67 Westy, the 65 Sea Blue Standard, and the, what was that, an 88? The 88 Titan Red Synchro Westy. That was all in West. So uh, that's where we're headed now. We're heading that direction. Getting kind of steep. This is a 10% grade. Duramax handles it with no issues at all. I've kind of been neglecting the Duramax lately. I don't even think I've driven this truck for probably two months. Ever since uh, I got the Uncle Skeeter's tow truck, I've been using that to haul stuff around. But this trip, I decided the Duramax of the single car was probably what we needed to take. So we're cruising the Duramax. I've been over this hill in my Deluxe, in my 65 Deluxe. Uh, it was a little bit of a scary experience. My brakes weren't quite up to it. And uh, I've also been over this in my 67 Beetle. 67 handles it, no problem. It actually really, I think it likes this hill actually. It likes cruising over this pass. But it's a steep one. If uh, you're in a, a van again or you know, stock Volkswagen, this is a rough one to get over and to get back down, actually. And when there's a lot of traffic, you know, things get backed up and it gets kind of scary. Anyways, let's keep on trucking. All right, we're coming up on the summit here of Teton Pass. They still have a fair amount of snow up here. Actually, quite a bit of snow. wasn't an altitude marker. I'm not sure what the altitude is there. But it's yeah, it's a pretty good, pretty good pass. So now looks like uh, I think it's actually a little steeper on this side versus uh, the Victor side steeper, more steep, whichever. It's steep. But how about that view? Check that out. It's a pretty good view. Nice and clear today. can actually see the Grand Teton from up here. So it's actually off to our left. Welcome to Wilson, Wyoming. Population 1,482 people. Elevation 6160. And if we take a right right up here, 
and head down that road a couple miles. That's where we pulled those two split windows and the Synchro Westy. Um, there's also a Bug Eye Sprite back up in there and a Jaguar XKE. I'm not sure on the year on that, but neither of those actually. Right up here on the left where there's uh, this general store sign right over here. I spotted a 60 Beetle back in there once and then drove back in and uh, ended up finding a 13 window. I think my buddy Dave actually ended up buying that 13 window. I don't know what happened to the bug. There was also a Super, I think, back in there. I haven't seen the 60 for, for a lot of years. I think it must have got bought. So yeah, there used to be a couple other cars right here in Wilson, but still not spotting any any VWs. Sure a lot of high roof vans, you know, the the sprinters and the those trades vans, you know, that are converted to campers. A lot of those these days seem like that's kind of replacing the Volkswagen. Replacing the van. I used to drive through these little resort towns and there were just old West Valleys and buses and campers. Now it's the high roof sprinter vans. That's the new uh, the new go-to van life rig. All right, looks like we're gonna cruise up here about another five miles and take a left. We're about three hours and ten minutes away from our destination. I guess. I don't know, it'd be nice to pick the Gi up in the daylight, but the plan is just to kind of cruise through tonight, get there, pick that Gi up, and then tomorrow we'll actually kind of take our time, stop and smell the roses a little bit on our way back, hit some back roads, maybe drive some alleys, um, stop and talk to people that are maybe out, you know, doing yard work or something. And, pick their brains, see if they know of any VWs. But uh, today we're just kind of driving, probably just gonna drive straight through. And then we'll take our time getting home tomorrow. All right guys, welcome to Jackson Hole, Wyoming. Jackson, you know, the last couple times I've been up here, Jackson's been good for a VW spotting one or two at least. I think the last time I was here I saw a pretty cool bay window rolling down the road. I have actually, I was just thinking about VWs I pulled out of Jackson. Um, I've scooped up, I bought an 80, uh, 1980 Westphalia, um, an 86 Westphalia, and a 78 Riviera. It was actually the Riviera. I don't think I did a video on any of those. Maybe one of them, maybe on the 86. But uh, the Riviera actually picked up maybe two or three years ago. I lose track of time, but it was literally the day before I went in for uh, surgery on my nose, for my nose job. I actually stopped up here in front of the Cowboy Bar snapped a photo of the Rivi. It was uh, early, pretty early in the year. Eh, it wasn't late in the year, I can't remember, but there was room to park in front of the Cowboy Bar, which is uh, doesn't happen very often. Usually that whole area is just completely stacked up. But I was able to pull the truck and trailer in front of uh, the bar there and snap a photo. So, as far as I can remember, I think those are the only three buses I've ever pulled out of Jackson. Two Vanagon Westies and a Rivy Bay Window. The Riviera was a pretty nice van. Actually, that one also went to, uh, to Lucas, if I remember right, at Old Bully Berlin. We're gonna cruise up here another half mile or so and take a left onto Cash Drive and then head on out of town. Keep the camera handy in case we get a VW sighting, but uh, so far, I don't see any Volkswagens. There's a little 911 for you. Turn left onto North Cash Drive. This is kind of 
kind of iconic Jackson right here. Well, Jackson kind of skunked us. All we ended up with there was a 911 just sitting out there on the side of the road. Somebody shopping at one of the little tourist traps there on the main drag. We are just entering Grand Teton Park, National Park. At least that's what the sign back there said, it was Grand Teton Park. If you look right there, there's the Grand. It's a little cloudy up there, so kind of hard to see. But uh, there it is. The Tetons look totally different from this side of the range. You know, when you're over on the other side, that's where they seem to be photographed the most from, from that side. Uh, this side, they just look just rugged and jagged. And, I mean, you just get so close to them. Pretty amazing. You know, I think about like a couple months ago when I took off to Arizona to get the single cab and I drove through Monument Valley and it was just, you know, obviously first time driving through there. It was pretty amazing. But, you know, I think about like views like this of the Grand Tetons are right in my backyard and sometimes I uh, kind of take them for take them for granted just because they are so close and see them often but uh, this is a beautiful area right here later next month we're actually going to be cruising up through here with a bunch of VWs and uh, probably roll some video on all of that get some nice shots of some Volkswagens up here Month, a month of Tetons and then probably roll into uh, Yellowstone as well. So there they are, as promised, a shot of the uh, Grand Tetons from this side of uh, the range. And like I said, it's a little cloudy, so kind of hard to see them, but pretty cool nonetheless. a little better shot of it for you guys. That's a big old rock. So we're heading on down the road. Not much out here. It's pretty wide open. Kind of just trucking along. Not much to see other than that beautiful view right there. Still quite a bit of snow up there. So let's keep on trucking. All right, we're coming up to the summit of Tagwadi Pass, I think it's called. Tagwadi, hopefully I'm pronouncing that right. There's some uh, pretty cool kind of cliffs and stuff just up the road here. Uh, kind of Sunday drive I took in the 67 was up this way ended up stopping in Dubois I guess it is or Dubois however you want to pronounce it and that's where I kind of turned around and went back home but this is uh, we just passed the Tagwadi Mountain Lodge there was like three snow cats and Gosh, probably close to a hundred snow machines parked in the parking lot there so obviously that's a pretty popular place for snowmobiling I don't know that there's any ski resorts around here but maybe there maybe there are um, definitely popular area for snow machining as you can see uh, there's still quite a bit of snow here probably a good two or three feet still out there and there's snow machine tracks everywhere so pretty popular place for the, the winter time apparently so we are at the top of Togwadi Pass about 9658 feet and uh, you can't really see them they're kind of off behind me there but 
there are the cliffs I was talking about. Might be a, probably a better view of them on the way back. So I'll try to get a shot of that. But when I came up through here at the 67, I actually kind of pulled off and took a couple shots of the 67 with those cliffs in the background. Really pretty area up here. Um, there's really a whole lot of nothing up here, which is kind of cool. Just kind of wide open, wide open space. Uh, mountains, cliffs, pine trees. Yeah, it's really, really pretty. Just about losing our daylight. It's a little after seven o'clock. more I'll be able to film tonight. Pretty tough to get a good shot of those cliffs. Like I say, coming back the opposite direction, uh, you could probably get some pretty good footage of them. Probably about eh, 35 miles, maybe, out of Dubois. It's kind of a small little, maybe one stoplight town. I don't even know if they have one stoplight there. But it's a pretty small town. There are actually at least one, I know there's at least one kind of VW guy. He's got, uh, I think he's got a trike. And he's had at least one bay window. Can't think of his name right now, but I know he pops up every once in a while on the, one of the forums or Facebook pages in Idaho Falls, or, or Southeast Idaho, I should say, for VWs. I think he might have sold his bus. Just has the trike now, and he rides the heck out of the trike, I guess. He's all over the, all over the map with the trike. Check out those spires up there. Look at that cliff. And we're hitting it just perfect time of day too where the lights, the sun's just kind of starting to dip down. I don't know if that showed up on the video or not, but pretty area. Not a very good area for hunting BWs though, as it turns out, because uh, there have not been any little towns at all yet to really pull off and scour the back roads. So. Like I say, Dubois is about as far as I've been in this direction. Hopefully between uh, Dubois and Basin where we're going to pick up the Gia. Hopefully there are some small towns we can peel off and do a little bit of VW hunting. Otherwise, it's just going to end up being a really scenic trip. Teton and beyond. Alright, check that out. Should have grabbed the camera as we came around that corner. How's that for a scenic view? guys we're rolling through Dubois Dubois Wyoming and we've yet to see any VWs this is a very VW less trip so far we're gonna go up here and take a right I actually did scope this town out like say a couple of years ago when I was here in the 67 Went and drove a bunch of back roads. Didn't come up with much. Other than that bay window bus I was talking about earlier. I think I said earlier that this was like a one stoplight town and I think I'm wrong. I don't even see one stoplight. So <laughs> it's kind of a cool little western town. 
but it's, uh, yeah, there's, it doesn't look like there's a stop right here, which is fun. I like little towns like this. So we're going to keep on cruising. It's getting kind of dark. The old Canon 70D does pretty good in the low light like this, but it's actually quite a bit darker than what it's showing on the screen right now. Almost punched a couple of deer a few miles back. Luckily they didn't jump out in the road. They were right on the edge of the road. But this is definitely a lot of wildlife in this area. So, probably going to be looking for wildlife now more than uh, going to be looking for V-dubs. And tomorrow on the way home with the light, we can focus on some back alleys and some pulling off in some of the small little towns. See if we can't round up a, a bus or two. Alright guys, uh, 1038, just rolled into Basin, trying to figure out some place to crash for the night, either going to set up in the back of the truck, crash there, or maybe find a little motel and crash there. Get these people up first thing in the morning, go pick up this low light. And we'll make our way back to Idaho Falls, hit some back roads, and see what we can drum up. See you guys in the morning. All right, guys. So it's about 7 a.m. Um, I got into town last night, and I realized actually I popped for a hotel room. Pretty, pretty sweet hotel room. Beats the back of the, uh, the cab of the truck for sure. But as I got into town, I realized that. I realized that the clock in the Duramax was still on the time from, yeah, before you're supposed to spring forward or whatever. So I was actually an hour behind, so it was actually a little after midnight that I got into town, or close to midnight. Oof, nice parking job. We just scrubbed the, we just scrubbed the sidewalls. Anyways, I need to go grab a phone charger because mine's not working, and then we're going to go check out this low light. All right, so got the low light loaded up. There's some bike stuff. And now we're in, um, looks like we are up the street from Medicine Lodge State Archeological Site. I don't know what town we're in. It's a little bit, it's a little rough. Um, these are usually the perfect towns to, uh, you know, find junk, rusty gold, I guess, as, uh, as they say. And I think I just saw a bug over here. I just saw the roof line of a beetle, orange beetle. It's burned back around over here. See it right over there? Man, check that out. Little, little Camino. See the bug peeking out? Look at this bad boy. That's pretty crazy. There's a there's the bug. It's pretty far gone. Not even gonna stop on that one. If it was free, it probably wouldn't even be worth the drive back. But at least we got, at least we found something. Let's keep going and might peel down this little side road over here and get back and start heading the other direction. All right, we're rolling through Worland, Wyoming. Another place I've never been. 
Um, past the 914 back there. Was way back in the sticks. It looked pretty boned out. So I did bother snapping a shot of that. Well, let's go wander around Warland a little bit. See if we can find a couple of back roads to cruise down. See if we can find any VWs here. Well, Warland, I think is what this place is called. Yeah, not coming up with a whole lot. A few C10s. Kind of some early American stuff. Pretty well good and lost. An old box van over there. Oh, hey. Look in the garage. We got a dune buggy. And we got a green beetle sitting over there. This house might be, yeah. Except for it doesn't look like there's anybody home. That would be the house to stop and ask about VWs, but it doesn't look like anybody's home. Bugs a four lug. Nothing that we're really interested in. So let's just keep on trucking. If there was a car there or somebody out in the yard, I'd stop and bug them and just ask them if they knew of any VWs in the area. But looked like no one was home. Okay guys, I gotta flip around real quick and show you this little C10. Little short box. Other than the Turn exhaust right hanging down, Avenue. really ugly. That's a pretty cool little truck. All original paint. Look at the patina on that. Pretty cool. Had to take a detour and come up and check this out. I've always been a kind of a sucker for snow cats. <laughs> that is that is a sweet looking rig. Man, that'd be a lot of fun. Okay guys, we've got our first bus siding. It's a bay window. It's a late model bay window. Just looks like a tin top. Pull over here and try to figure out whose property it's on. Guessing it's this house right over here. Let's pull up here just a little bit more. See it over there? over here and we'll go see if we can talk to somebody about it all right guys so we're in luck we actually found somebody at the house they said the bus actually belongs to a nephew and that it may be for sale just tried to call him and uh, he's not answering so we'll uh, left him a message and hopefully he'll be getting back to me soon but there is the rockers underneath are super dry. The nose has been resprayed and it's got a pretty good dent there. But uh, this thing is very rust free. Look up under here. Man, just no rust at all. A couple dents on the corner right over here. Odd that rust right there. Front floor is a little rusty. It's got a rear seat in it. Um, that seat here is actually looks like it's out of an old Chevy truck or something. Headliner is a little rough. Just making some notes here to do a quick walk around so that uh, if I do get a call back. From this guy who uh, whose name is actually Guy, and uh, we'll be able to remember what we were dealing with. A little rust there, man. For as dry as the rockers are, it kind of has some 
funny rust on it. <laughs> Check that out. Ah, uh, that's awesome. I honestly don't know what that is. Help me out guys, power steering. What the heck is that? Well guys, I honestly have no idea what this is. So you bay window gurus out there can fill me in. Doesn't look like AC lines. I don't know, it looks like uh, I don't know. Don't know, guys. Chime in. Look at this Huntington Beach. Jim Marino. Old license plate bracket. Not a bad bus, really. Pretty dang clean. Again, these rockers are just amazingly dry. Well, we'll uh, hope that we get a call back on this one because this would be worth the trip back to pick up. Okay, just flipped a U-turn. This place might be a little tough to find somebody at, but... Uh, maybe not. Looks like there's a house there. There's also a pile of old beetles over here. Holy cow, there's a ton of beetles. Let's go in and... Uh, have a chat with these folks. Look at all the Volkswagens. This is the Wyoming Volkswagen guy, that's for sure. Well, there were about 12 or 13 old VWs back there at that place. Well, bugs anyway. There were a couple of rabbits as well. Um, gate was locked. Dogs were barking. I stood out there for a while. Let's see if I can get anybody's attention. Nobody came out. I decided not to uh, push my luck and, you know, pop the fence or something or run to the house. Didn't feel like getting shot today. Most of the stuff looked a little on the rough side. There was one like 65, 66 bug up by the house that didn't look like too bad a little car, but most of the stuff was late model, four lug. So I left a card. It's always good to talk to those guys and just see if they maybe know of anything around. Usually those guys know of other cars in the area. Might know of some early stuff or maybe even some bus stuff. So we'll see if we get a call back from them. Welcome to Kirby. Let's see what uh, see what Kirby has to offer. This looks like a pretty small town. I didn't catch population back there, but it's probably barely triple digits. This little town is called Thermopolis, I guess. <laughs> where Thermal Man lives. Lots of hot pots and stuff, I guess, around the area, but it looks like quite a few old cars out here in the field, so let's take a quick detour and do a hot lap around the dirt roads here. All right, so way over there, probably right about there. Focus it again. I think I see a, a bug back there. It looks like maybe Java Green. I did just flip back around and uh, there's a Corvair sitting back there. But I'm gonna flip over to the telephoto and see if we can get a better shot of what that might be right behind that kind of Quonset hut. Okay, the telephoto is on and I apologize because this gets super shaky, guys, out. Uh, long distance like this. I'm going to try to zoom in. See right there in the middle? To the right of that Ford pickup? 
think that uh, looks like a Java green, something or other. Like I said, there is a Corvair back there too. So I'm going to run up to this house and see if uh, maybe these guys know of any other VWs in the area. Well, sure enough, that was a 67 Java green back there. Said that a tree fell on the roof years ago and he's just been using it as a parts car. He's got a 62 in the shop. Um, also has a little later model four lug. And some odds and ends, but uh, didn't want to really sell anything. So was worth asking. Said he didn't know of any other VWs in the area either. No bus stuff. So we'll keep looking. Um, yeah, barely caught that one out of the corner of my eye. It was off the road a ways there. I just left a U-turn because I noticed the silhouette of a bug at the top of this hill right here. So we're just gonna flip around real quick. See if I can catch it on video. Proceed to the right. It's right up here somewhere. flip around and get a better look at it. Okay, I think it was right up here. I'm just gonna pull off right on this dirt road and walk over there and check it out. All right, so no one's home. That car ended up just being a four lug. Looked like, you know, late model. Let's see if we can get over here and get see, see it. Oh, you see it over there? You got a better shot of it from over here. Gotta go up this road anyways and find a spot to turn around. Nothing else really BW-wise over there. on this trip guys let's flip around here and we're almost back to uh, you know what there's a bunch of junk up here we might as well go just a little bit farther see if there's anything down here kind of doubt there is but we'll head down here and then flip around so back at the gas station I was talking to the guy there he said that up by the golf course there was a bus, said it was a yellow bus, but you can see there, there's a yellow bug and a little tin top westy right behind it. Bus looks like it's uh, used quite a bit. It's up on blocks, actually. You can see the tires are up off the ground. So probably not going to stop and check on this one. I seriously doubt that it's for sale. But yeah, there's a couple in couple in Dubois I didn't know about. Just chatting at the gas station, found out about them. Always good to ask the locals. Well, check this out. Here we are, end of April, and uh, we're in a pretty good little snowstorm. It's probably not showing up on video. For some reason, it never really does show up as much on video as, as it is in I guess uh, in person. Anyways, just rolling through a nice spring snowstorm in Wyoming on the way home. Probably just about wrapped up as far as trying to find VW stuff. Um, don't think if we head back the same direction we came, we're probably not going to run across a whole heck of a lot. But uh, we'll keep the camera handy just in case we do.